Good afternoon. We have with us Dr. Alok Nath Day, CTO of Samsung India. And uh, let us understand from him what problems is 5G solving. I think globally, if you look into the 5G, you know, first of all, you need to have a lot of infrastructure, right? And people have been already invested into 4G and they're trying to move to this 5G. So infrastructure is a must. And then on top of that, you build certain services. For developed nations, the service is the driver. But for us, yes, service is the driver, but basic services is also very, very important. As we were discussing in the workshop, that you know today if you have a call drops or other kinds of difficulties, we can rethink how we are deploying the RF planning and bring this 5G, because 5G comes in three different bands. We're talking about a low frequency uh, that is at 700 megahertz, there is a 3.3 to 3.6, that kind of band is the mid band, and then 26, 28 gigahertz that is there. And each is solving different problems. You can have a wide coverage, you can also have a hotspot based coverage. So when you talk about services, the multimedia services is one important and the IoT services. These are the two fangs. 5G is the back end, but these two services. We launched in Pyeongchang Olympics just this January when Samsung piloted and tested in the real uh, stadium. We brought in a VR based systems, like the athlete when he's uh, trying to do certain things. Uh, can you see his particular or her particular view. Or if you are in the stadium and you are in a very disadvantageous position, can you get another view of that, how athletes is doing? So these kinds of services we have already kind of tested, piloted. And then in future, obviously, developed nations will look for connected car and those kinds of services for nations like us, probably health, education, how can you do a remote surgery, and uh, how can you transmit uh, image uh, for your ECG and this to a remote doctor sites? These would be the driving factors. What are the 5G challenges and uh, how do you see Indian operators solving those as they move forward? I think there is a fundamental thing when 5G comes in this millimeter wave, what happens is there is a coverage issue. Today we can do a long distance coverage, but this 5G, uh, even to do a one kilometer coverage at that frequency is challenging. And we have to adjust this two meter height. You can get it. Initially people are thinking it was 50 meter, 100 meter, but it has been proven that it can go to one kilometers. At the same time, you know, you can go underground. People have tested the three basement level down. You can still get the signals. So one is this, um, how is the coverage? Second is the penetrations that happens, that can it come inside the buildings and uh, we can solve it. So people have also proven. Third is the mobility, which is, uh, can I do a handoff when I'm in a train? It penetrates the signal as well as high speed, 100 kilometers per hour in Korea, in Japan, people have tested. We have done at the, with the car at a very high speed, like 192 kilometers per hour. Can it do under tunnel? a switch over. So these have been proven, all the ingredients are there, and we just need to put together, system is there, silicon is there, uh, how can you deploy, and it will start to happen very soon uh, in different countries, from trial to limited deployment to a more extensive deployment. When do we see 5G devices, uh, both on the fixed as well as on the mobile side, being commercially available globally as well as in India? No, I think this is already uh, planned. I mean, uh, today we had another workshops from ITU, and there is delegation from Korea, Japan, Singapore, and everybody kind of announced. Uh, the chip vendor, the equipment manufacturers, some is going to be coming in first half of next year, some second half. In more wide deployment, you will see maybe 2020. Uh, in terms of which one comes first, both could come, there is a fixed uh, some countries are looking for fixed wireless deployment, but some countries are really trying to go forward and do the mobility based. So it depends on which country, which operators, everybody wants to be first in something, they're experimenting, they have their own driving uh, agenda for based on the applications that they need. So depending on that, people are doing. But from technology standpoint, it's more or less there. 
if somebody gives a trigger and there is a business case, everybody will focus on that and will drive it to a solution. Bangalore, uh, Samsung has a large uh, R&D center in Bangalore. Right. So what are the things that you are doing on the device and on the network side? Uh, first of all, on this itself, I mean, the broadly we treat it as a center of excellence of few things. We work on 5G, we work on multimedia as a service, and we work on IoT as a service. So these are our three main things, and then there is a silicon uh, part of the development. Uh, 5G, we have a lot of patents from here. We're responsible for uh, things like access control, how do you do. So globally, Samsung is a leader and have filed a lot of patents in uh, 5G area. Same way in IMS, in 4G, in 5G, even our center is excelling. And we have a good record of um, a great number of patents that are coming out and publications that are happening. Also, as I told about PyeongChang Olympics, our team were there in this frigid winter with windy conditions. They spent 10 nights there in the December and uh, brought up those solutions. So it gives also a joy and pride when you work hard and see your solutions that are coming into fruition. So we are into the communications, we are into deriving services, and 5G as a backhaul will help into multimedia services, and IoT, whether it is a narrow band, broadband, so those kinds of things we are starting to build. Uh, for us, the infrastructure is almost there, the devices are kind of getting ready, and then finally, it's all about the services being there, otherwise, uh, how do you take it forward, right? So we are looking into those aspects of it uh, to, to build this case. Thanks, uh, Dr. Alok Mandi, for speaking to me.